All right, folks, today on Classic Mini DIY, we are going to be putting the cylinder head back on our motor. Um, the cylinder head uh, is the block that sits right on top here. And there's a head gasket that goes in between the cylinder head and your block. Um, your cylinder head houses all your valves, your uh, rocker assembly, your lifter springs, um, basically everything that helps give the engine fuel and lets the exhaust out. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna need is your head gasket. Um, the head gasket uh, is the seal that helps seal your pistons, um, all of your uh, lifters, everything separate from each other on the block, in between your block and the cylinder head. Um, it's important that this goes on the right way um, and that it is tightened down properly. Um, this cylinder head gasket has a little uh, indicator there where it says top, so that's going to be facing upwards. And this only fits on one way, uh, so you slide this sucker on, like so. You just try and slide it all down at about the same, same rate so it all slides real nice. And there you have it. So there we have our cylinder head gasket. Make sure all the holes line up. Anything that are that should have a hole has a hole lined up, and you're all set. So there's your head gasket. The next step is to bring your cylinder head and actually place it on top here. Um, the cylinder head's pretty heavy. Some people might need a friend to help them lower it on, um, but it also only goes on one way. Um, your uh, heater uh, piping actually will come out right here. This is the front of your motor, and this is the back. Um, with all your lifters in the back here. Um, so go ahead and bring that over and I'll uh, set that on. All right, there you have it, sitting nice, steady, level surface on there. Um, the next step is to uh, get your rocker assembly, I'm sorry, get your lifters, and you're gonna put them back in the order they came out, back in your cylinder head. Now the way I normally keep them ordered is with a little piece of uh, cardboard like this, they dangle right through there, and uh, I label it flywheel and water pump so I know which side it needs to go to. Now I've set my lifters back in there. Now you may notice, I don't know if you can see in the video, but these are actually sitting at different heights. Remember, that's totally okay. Um, when your engine spins, these lifters go up and down based on where your camshaft is rotating around in the lobes where they're the highest. Um, so I can give you a demonstration here. If we rotate the motor, you'll see those rods moving up and down real ever so slightly. It's nothing crazy, nothing super big, but that small movement is what opens and closes your valves while your engine's running. The next step is to get your rocker assembly and uh, make sure that all of these are loosened and backed out. Um, this came off when your valves were at a different, I'm sorry, when your pistons were at a different position. So you don't want any unnecessary, uh, unnecessary push on these valve springs when you're putting it on. So I just loosen every one of these bolts or every one of these nuts and then you use a flathead screwdriver and pull it out. So these are gonna get readjusted once it goes back on your car um, with a, uh, a small feeler gauge and I'll show you how to do that uh, a little bit later in this video. Um, but again, just loosen all these nuts and loosen the screws after loosening those, uh, those lock nuts and uh, bring this as loose as you can get it. Great, so now we have this rocker assembly uh, put on our cylinder head. And I went ahead and loosely uh, tightened down all of the bolts on my cylinder head. So there's two different types of cylinder heads on your on Classic Minis. There's a nine bolt stud pattern and then an 11 bolt stud pattern, which has two more studs right here on your cylinder head. Mine is the nine bolt pattern. 
Um, some people actually modify their motors to have the, not, uh, the 11 bolt pattern, but I just left mine stock. Um, so the next step is to actually torque these down in the pattern that you uh, should be following for um, your cylinder head. Um, Mini Mania has some great literature on uh, the pattern that you should be tightening these down. Um, basically you want to start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in that pattern and you torque them down evenly as you go around. Um, the torque setting for the cylinder heads is 40 foot pounds of torque. Um, you're going to need a torque wrench to actually tighten these down um, as well as uh, if you have ARP stud bolts like I've got put on on my motor um, they take a, a 12 point hex head um, if you have the stock ones they're just standard hex heads um, so let's go ahead and start tor torquing this down got my uh, torque wrench set to 40 and uh, we'll get this uh, this head put on So when you're tightening these down, your torque wrench will click once you've reached the, uh, the torque spec that you're trying to tighten these to. So if you uh, listen, that click right there means that I've hit 40 foot-pounds of torque and I can move on to the next bolt. Now you may be curious why you have to go in a specific pattern when you're tightening down your cylinder head. The reason is, is that as you're tightening these bolts down, your cylinder head can actually warp if it's uh, tightened in the wrong order. When your cylinder head warps, or if it warps rather, um, what happens is you'll get leaks in between the cylinders, or you can get leaks in the uh, out, out the sides and underneath this area where the head meets the block. So the next step is to tighten down the last four um, nuts that hold the rocker shaft onto your cylinder head. Um, these studs, uh, or I'm sorry, these nuts don't require quite as much torque as your um, stud bolts do because they're not actually holding your head onto the block. Um, you can tighten these down with a torque wrench. It takes about 25 foot-pounds of torque. Um, it's a uh, almost so low that it's almost not worth using the torque wrench um, to do these ones. However, uh, I'm a stickler for, uh, for spec, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my torque wrench, set it down to the correct torque setting and tighten these down to 25 foot-pounds of torque. All right, so there we have it. Those are all tightened down. Um, that's it for the torque wrench. Um, you are all finished tightening down your head and your head's now sitting firmly on your engine block. One last thing to note is right here there's a small bypass valve on some cylinder heads. Make sure that you tighten down these, uh, these two hose clamps and that hose is there. If it's not, um, it's going to need to be there otherwise you're going to get some coolant uh, running through them. And um, some spillage there. All right, folks. <clears throat> Next step is to get your rocker assembly adjusted. Um, so what we're going to be doing is adjusting the valve clearances, um, and that is the space that's in between your rocker here and the valve itself, um, the valve stem, which is underneath here. Um, that is done with a feeler gauge. Now, this feeler gauge is used to um, set the the actual size of that gap. So there's tons of different measurements on here. I mean, just absolutely tons on this feeler gauge. Um, the Mini uses a 0.3 millimeter stock um, valve uh, gap. And so if we go through here, so it looks like the closest I've got here is point 305. Um, this is going to need to be the gap that goes in between 
these two items. Now the way that you get these valves to a point where you can adjust them, you have to turn the motor over um, and uh, bring a valve to full, um, full compression and then you do the valve that's on the opposite. So for example, um, let's rotate this over and get a valve at compression. All right, so right now, valve number one is fully compressed. What that means is we need to be adjusting valve number eight, which is this last one right over here. Um, as you can see, that's really loose right now. Um, so let's go ahead and get our flathead screwdriver, which goes inside these little, uh, these little flathead openings. And then this is a, a locking uh, nut, so you'll tighten your flathead uh, flathead bolt down. You'll tighten that down with your socket wrench on here already. And then once you have reached the adjustment that you want, then you tighten that down while making sure that doesn't move. So let's go ahead and get those. It's a little bit easier to show you. All right. So you'll need this flathead screwdriver and a 7 16 spanner. So go ahead and tighten this sucker down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it till it's almost completely tight and then bring my feeler gauge over and check the gap. So it's still a little loose, a little loose. So it's starting to get a little tighter. All right, so right there it's completely caught, which is not what we want. You want this to feel a little tight in there, but not totally stuck. And there we have it. So it comes out pretty easy, but it is tight in there. Next step is to take your spanner and tighten down your lock nut. Now it's really important that when you tighten down this lock nut, that you hold your screwdriver tight so that that doesn't rotate. And then after you've adjusted it, go ahead and get your feeler back in there. So mine got a little too tight. I'm gonna to have to loosen that back up again. All right, test it again. Much better. So now that's the the correct distance. And next step is we're gonna rotate the motor again until we have another valve that's at full compression. So valve number one's full compression right now. Gonna loosen it up. And the next valve that's going into full compression is valve number five. With valve number five open, you're gonna now check valve number four. And you're gonna do the exact same steps that we just went through. So that's pretty loose. All right, Get that feeler gauge in there. Whatever. All right, check that gap one more time. That's too tight, so we're gonna have to loosen it up again. Much better. All right, so now we're just gonna repeat that step across all the valves one by one. You can tell it's working because you can see each one of the valves opens in pairs. So exhaust and intake one by one, one by one. And so when your motor is running, that's happening at a much faster rate. You know, these are going up and down, up and down, up and down really fast. Um, so that you can get air in and out in a timely fashion, get your power to the wheels, and boom, you're going. Um, aside from that, 
The only thing left to do is put the valve cover back on, which is a pretty straightforward process. Um, you have your valve cover and a gasket that goes in between right here. And you set that on and you got yourself a, a cylinder head again. All right, so that's it for Classic Mini DIY today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment sections below. Uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy your minis and motor on.